It's six oh one. I'm gonna start. Got it. All right, and we'll we're gonna now start doing the pledge as well. We've been lacking pledge moments, so if we could all stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I will promise to remind you of being the Boy Scout leader. Thank you. You you failed up until this point. Yes, I have. You're forgiven as well. Miserably. <laughs> so we'll start with the old business, which is the minutes of August 3rd. Um, everyone received a copy of notice. Did anyone have any comments, changes, or edits? It looks really good. Well done, Lisa. Oh, thank you. So can I have a motion to accept these minutes? I move. David, motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And so moved. Back to our natural resources inventory. Obviously, you're working hard on that. Still following up on all of the um, procedures and um, any grants. Leslie, have we heard any news on the grant that you guys applied for? Any? No, we're not going to apply that until December. December? Okay. Yeah. I mean, there's no rush anyway, obviously, because we're waiting for the mapping for the state. But we would like to have a more in-depth natural resources inventory and there's lots of ways of oh, sure. expanding it. <laughs> and um, one of the things that Michael had said was um, for us to look at Richfield. Um, natural resources inventory in Connecticut. There's a, they have a nice website on that. If anybody ever wants to go and look at it, it's very entertaining. They've got lots of programs of uh, very similar to with the Vernal Pools study that you guys all participated in and just that they did throughout the year. And I see us possibly doing some of those types of projects to set up and be a part of it. All right? Anything else on that? Yes, yeah, sort of. Go ahead. Uh, Mary Alex sent out a notice from Winnow Cooperative, and some of us may have got that also, that they're running a mapping uh, yes, yes. seminar on Sunday, uh, it's Saturday, Saturday, the 10th. Saturday, Saturday, it's Saturday, it's Saturday, it's Saturday, it's Saturday, 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 this Saturday, the same as the community day. I've taken a couple of these. I'm not doing it again. Uh, but it's very interesting, and you, you do it all on your computer. It doesn't require any basic software programming or anything and it's normally well attended and they come around and help you do everything and they make maps various types of maps habitat maps streams maps and so on and it's useful to sort of give you a background on how NWI might look like and they probably may even go into the NWI since it's run by Dutchess County so just throwing that out if anybody wants to get up eight o'clock in the morning and go down there with your laptop or whatever, it's yeah. probably still open. You'd have to let them know. Um, I think it's online. They, they may. This I think it's online. It's a little awesome. more than last time they ran it. So yeah, it may even, But you don't get the chance to have the computer in front of you and run through the different mapping programs right. and how to use them. Yeah. So I don't know um, who was and this group was a few more times uh, so that's a Thursday's meeting where Nan did her presentation. Mm -hmm. But she talked about the maps that they've been working on. Mm -hmm. um, or, you know, mm -hmm. digitally, I guess. Well, we're working on <laughs> yeah, 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 on, on all of it. Do we have our, do we have those right now? And they, they have, where, where are they living and how can we get them more, um, more accessible? Well, they're not going to be accessible. Well, Nan's going to give them to us digitally so that okay. we can then use them. And But the, the point is, is that those particular maps will be updated again in the middle of next year. Yeah. So they're, they're of some use, but they're going to be updated again. Well, they're much more thorough. They're way th more, more thorough. More thorough yeah. and more comprehensive, covering yes. more things than we see. I don't think we've ever had those before. Mm -hmm. um, no. So I thought that was really helpful. And, you know, of course, doing the deep dive for the National Resources Inventory is terrific. And we should absolutely do that. But yep. a lot, at least we have something that's a little more yep. in-depth and comprehensive than what we've had before. Yeah, no, it's um, going to be very useful. And we just need to link them to our zoning and our all of our yeah. other things, which is part of the process that we're, that. yeah, which is part of the process that you're working on as well. Yeah. There's a little more to the maps, by the way. They're, those maps are based on GIS layers and somebody who knows how to run GIS can separate those maps out for various purposes. Let's say you just wanted a map of the uh, view sheds only 
Yeah. And the person to do that is the person at Cornell Cooperative. His name is Sean Carroll. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay. He, he does all the work for us occasionally. occasionally. Yeah. yeah. And so, so all you need from her are the, what they call the GIS layers of databases. And you just give, go down to him if you want something. And he'll do it for you. Mm -hmm. He'll make your maps, the PDFs, and everything else. Yep. Uh, and the and the village and the village did that for the village geography in 2014. Because I because I did that. That was the grant that I got, and I went and I worked with Sean Carroll and there was another gentleman who was there at the time. So they're all. If you want to know the part, the, the purpose of doing it was to locate all. 287 storm drains within the village so we could develop a map of the storm drain system which we did not never had okay so that all got done and we did it all through GIS mapping and uh, through a grant that I got from Dutchess County okay. and, and so we forget the village watershed I, I am, yeah. I'm, um, Deirdre and I have not scheduled the exact day and time for meeting next week to talk about the Dutchess County you know, for the so yeah, well, the, the other important aspect of it is the one that applies to the town, which is especially germane to this group, is the fact that, it's that they, you have GIS mapping of the, uh, of the watershed. And the watershed goes right through Mabbitsville and the whole general, general area that then leads to the pumping station you know, right next to Margaret's house. Yep. So, right you know, that, that's, that's with all the considerations that we have to deal with, as the CAC and then the planning board has to deal with all of their grants and everything else has to go through what's the consideration for watershed and um, just so you're informed they passed a law back in 19 help me out how in 92, 92. 92 in the health law that gave mm -hmm. the village jurisdiction over 317 parcels in the town of Washington that we are technically responsible for and there's supposed to be a symbiotic relationship where anytime something comes up at the planning board that involves one of those parcels and they have the list so they know okay. what they are that the village has to be informed to make sure that uh, as the CAC operates that, that something that's going on is not going to compromise the watershed area that runs into the Oh, wow, I, I was that's the first I heard that. Like, so I'll make sure that we the planning board knows that and they have that list. Oh, they they have they known do. it. I'm sure they're they not they, using they, it. They, 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 they do, they, but they've they, stopped they, using it to the best of my knowledge. They may still, but I'm not aware of it anymore. That they I depend on Howard most of the time to tell okay. me what the parcel is and see if I have to come and then be part okay. of the discussion. Well, the village the parcel list is very simple. Uh, Kristen prepares a uh, report, mm -hmm. and in the report, there's a parcel number. It's six digits. Yeah. Somebody on that planning board has to look and see if those six digits are on the list. Okay. And then, if so, notify the village. Okay. And we've had multiple promises from Nikki and, and everybody through the years saying, oh, well, make, make note of that, but it doesn't, it doesn't okay. happen. There's, there's a state law. It's on part of a state law. That's why it's there. It's very easily yeah. help us with because right. they, they do search the parcel number. So I'm glad you told me that, and I'll make sure we start. Yeah, because and, and at least it a lot of the misunderstandings and some of the stuff going on with the Ruby's project was directly related related to the point that uh, that that is part of our watershed. It is one of those properties, but when at the time it was a temporary employee, when when the people from Ruby's came to him and said, "Who do we have to get approvals from?" He said. He said to them incorrectly, he said, well, you don't have to worry about it because you're just repaving the small, small area and it's right. a parking lot and you don't have to confer with basically anybody, which was dead wrong. So, you know, they created a whole, you know, set of circumstances after which probably could have been avoided had we been informed a little bit, a little bit more time ahead of time and done some preliminaries because Ruggies was, 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 pursued, was proceeding with good intentions and tried to go to right. all the people they thought they had mm -hmm. to go to and they were just given poor information. Yeah. Maybe Aaron can do that. He's the, uh, yeah, I know. I think oh, I think that he would then be aware of it as soon as he... It, yeah. it's, he, he probably he, knows how to use a spreadsheet, so it's a very simple right. matter. If you have a spreadsheet, <laughs> you just put the number in yeah. and it pops out. Aaron's title? 
he is the consultant to the planning and the ZBA. So he's, um, what is that title? It's, um, he is, he's sort of a, um, he's, his job description with his firm is he's a planning uh, and land use planning uh, expert consultant. So that's what so he, that's all is he that permanent or is he just going to be, yeah, he's so, permanent. So we've hired, the, we engage the firm. Uh, we it. work with Aaron. There's someone who's senior to Aaron if there's a very big project and they have, gosh, over 100 people that work for the firm. So, and they have, he, there's a Dutchess County office, which Aaron works out of. But if we ever needed an expert on bridge engineer or anything, they have a whole roster of experts that work within their firm that we can, we can access. Um, and they do a lot of work in Hudson Valley. They work with yeah. me um, River Plains and yeah, that's been very helpful. Their memos are terrific. If you ever want to look, yeah, really, really yeah. thorough. Mm -hmm. yeah. Basically, what he does is he goes in, he, he assesses an application, and then he writes a report, it's sort of highlighting all of the issues and questions that this board wants to ask and concerns that he sees, and where he sees there might be an inconsistency with what they're applying for and what our zoning uh, code allows. Yeah. yeah, he seems terrific. I just yeah. didn't know if he was part of this current um, examination of processes and was temporary or so. It's good. So, Pace Land Use Law Center did give us their final report mm -hmm. between the, the August meeting and September meeting. It gave it gave me and Mary and circulated to the town board, um, which is which I'll get to at a later time, the mm -hmm. town board meeting. But so he's they, they were really focused on the process part. Um, but he was part of those meetings, provided his input, and he'll be helping to implement whatever comes out of that, which is great. It's a very specific recommendation for each committee and not just committees, but you know, different governing bodies. And, sorry, I'm hijacking your meeting. You guys, no, no, you're, good. you're good. You're, 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 you're filling in some time because <laughs> I feel like this will be very quick as usual. And you need you need the kind of background information that yeah. goes with the histories of some of what's happened before so we can continue to do a better job. For, yeah, for sure. So, no, I'm, I'm ha I, I know that the, that the, um, that parcel, you know, the parcel and village jurisdiction will be a very easy thing to, to address. Yeah. All right. So just moving on to the CSC task force update. There is no update. Um, Leslie will get together and continue on in our conversation with the leadership um, portion of that. Yeah, I, I think the, just if we can get that person that Tiffany is doing from case recommended that we do a free kind of overview for us, for the CAC, and any town board members that want to come to say this is how towns can yeah. put together CAC. There's a bit different, they're different. I know that Pam's had a ton of work on that, yeah, yeah. so was Shannon. So, yeah. But we thought it'd be helpful for the people who want to volunteer to be engaged with that process to hear right. directly mm -hmm. from yeah. whoever this expert person is yeah. and they can ask questions. So if we so. can if we can reach out and do that, yeah. that would be great. Yeah. You can give me the information. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I forward, I'll, I'll send it to you. Right yeah, now. just so that'd be great um, because I know I've spoken with Jen and, and Genevieve and she's she's great. She's ready to get on with, you know, meeting with the town side and um, expanding to both, you know, so that we work as well as we can together on different things and um, help is able to help whoever it is that supports the town the yeah, we task force. Had, we had a meeting today just for your information. We had a meeting oh, today with um, with, with Jillian, Jillian is it? I think Jillian Matthews uh, who is the liaison from Cornell Cooperative Extension oh, okay. and we, we were on, we were on a zoom call for like an hour and 15 minutes oh. going over Okay. Uh, a number of things which I won't bore you with now, but basically it's uh, we were going through the entire level one of the assessment form and things that need to be done and okay. giving out homework and whatever. Yeah. And we'll be meeting pretty much every two weeks. Okay. And how many people are on the uh, village task force? Uh, basically right now, it, it's, I don't have a list of all the names, but, but Jen mentioned today that she wants to get together with me and and uh, be able to show me the list of people that she thinks should be on it. And she oh, okay. told me today that it's definitely me and Tim and her, and I believe she was looking to get Shannon involved as well. Uh, yeah. And beyond that, 
said, once I show you the list of people who I think probably should, who are village residents, you can help fill in. Okay. So I'd be more than happy to, if there's anybody in a village level who express interest or anybody here knows of someone who might be interested, let me know. I did bring up, David, uh, either your name or Nan's name is possibly being someone who might want to, can, might want to consider reaching out to, but beyond that, if we're open. Okay, sounds great. All right, well, thank you. And um, Community Day is, as we said, Saturday when they're doing the other <laughs> that none of us can attend. Shannon has volunteered to hand I'll out there. hand out in the carry tent a form, the updated version of the little brochure. I have edits that Nan gave me the corrections to make. Um, I've got some placement to, to do, but this was just a sample of what I was saying. It's cute. It's a nice yeah, I mean, it's, nice. it's just something just to say, just to bring attention. This is what we do. We're here for you. You know, just put the website on it. Yeah. Did you write that down? No, I'll write it down. I'm kidding. Um, so, yeah. So that's it. That'll be great. Let's move on to new business. We'll let Howard. I'm looking at this word, the B thing. The B thing? Oh, pollinator yeah. pathway. Yeah. I got I'll make it Upcoming Friday. Okay. <laughs> it seems like without giving me a lot of details, you could have a bullet list of just a bunch of different things. That's what I thought. But yeah. I I'm, again I was I was drawn yeah. when you're under the pressure of I doing can. something quickly, I couldn't think. But if anyone has any bullet points that they'd like me to add, I'm happy to do it. <laughs> just have it to me by six AM tomorrow. That's and my deadline. Just, just as an aside, most of you know it, but if you didn't, Nan's career has been editing and PR work for yeah. the IBM Federal Credit Union. So she'll look at a document and say, three words misspelled. Yeah, yeah, she can and point out down. everything. So that's, she's, that's her gift. Yeah, yeah. So to be able to go through and, and do nuance, that's another resource we have. Yeah, thank you. I love Nan. Yeah. I do supplement her with cookies now and again. <laughs> and delicious cookies too, I must admit. So yes, but that's I appreciate her. I did it for cookies. Okay, there we go. I can I can and I'm sorry I didn't bring any cookies today. I usually I bring cookies. All right, so Howard, go ahead. In uh, brief. In brief. <laughs> There's only one thing actually that really applies to us. It's uh I assume everybody saw this at some point. The, the list is a, I know we mailed it. Yes. And, that agenda and from last was on the town website, the agendas. So it was the one that we've been working on, the uh, Wolf Clock public hearing. And uh, at the, it was rather interesting in that at the last minute, we have an updated report, from Trust, which I belatedly sent to everybody. And so I hope people had a chance at least to maybe get it downloaded and looked at it. And if not, pass it around. I haven't did, seen that. Did they, I pour it? Yes, I thought so. Oh, okay. Yeah, you did. It was very clearly written. Yeah. And there was no, there was no, you know, gobbledygook speaking it. So, a layman like me could read it. No, so the, pro the problem with this report is we, the second one, is that it came out just hours literally before the meeting. And we, we, the uh, CAC, obviously couldn't meet the comment on it or even email about it because it was so quick. And I mentioned that to the planning board, the first thing that we were unable to comment on that, but we were looking forward to it, and it was ignored. They did not respond one way or another to that, which didn't bode well for the way the rest of the meeting was apparently going to go. Uh, so that's the way it started. Uh, then I'd like to jump to the... Uh, what I consider a fairly important part in the Steve Marino recommendations. It's on the second page and he talks about the Conservation Advisory Commission is correct in pointing out that under normal circumstances, circumstances, the existing house and landscape would not be approved under the current town code. So this lines up with what we asked originally is for the applicant to give a statement why it couldn't be put elsewhere. Of course, the consultant even confirmed this is not allowed really to be there. And so why can't you put it elsewhere, which is what it says in our original report. We quoted the section of town code that says, 
is right up front is one of the first things why you, the applicant, can't put this elsewhere. And we made a site visit. And we looked at the site visit, which I think you saw all copies of that. And the site visit shows there's plenty of places to put that. So now it gets to the question, um, there's two parts to this question. The first part is why you, the applicant, have to put it there? And we didn't get an answer. Someplace in the conversation later on, uh, somebody from their side volunteered, well, you know, if he moved it outside the wetlands buffer and attached it to the building that way, he'd have to walk an extra 20 feet to get into the parts of the building he might want to go to, which I, I couldn't believe I heard that. That is not a reason to put things in a wetlands buffer that shouldn't be there. So the report went on, and Steve Marino then started talking about all of the things that were wrong on that project. And he is going to work with the applicant. There's a long list of things that Steve Marino and his company will be doing to fix all the things that's wrong. And so because if you let him build it, don't make him move it 10 feet or 20 feet out further. If you let him build in the wetlands buffer, like we looked at this thing. Did you all see that, by the way, last mm -hmm. time? Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is the site plan. And all he has to do is shift it back about 15 or 20 feet and attach to the building outside the buffer. And there's no problems. But if you let him build where he wants to build, they can fix all of the things, supposedly, that Steve Marino will work on for the next three years planting, drainage, uh, septic system. Septic system, by the way, is failing, according to Steve. Now, if you, to the best of my knowledge, when I asked Mike about it, who has a lot of information as well, normally the Board of Health gets involved in this in some way. And at some point, you're required to fix this. And that is not the planning board's job in a wetlands application. That's the Board of Health issue. If he doesn't fix this, it's not because they didn't approve his project. It's because it's a Board of Health violation. So that should not be a selling point. Well, if you approve me, I'll fix the septic system. But that was another problem. And the next thing that came up is at the meeting before this one, you probably remember we talked about this briefly, there's a clause in the zoning code about what to do with a non-conforming use. And it's very explicit. It's part of the zoning code. It's not something that applies only to the CA, to this planning board. It applies to the town code. And the town code speaks to non-conforming uses. And I'm going to read what I read at the meeting uh, yesterday. It's section 391. And they, oh, by the way, before I do that, they, at the last meeting, they referred this applicant to the town, to the ZBA, to have this clause evaluated for him. Okay, the clause says as follows. Non-conforming uses, building, has the word building in there, and structures. A non-conforming use of land, building, and other structures may be continued in accordance with the following provisions and limitations. The first one, provision one, except as permitted by subparagraph seven below. Now, here's the key word. It says no building or other structure or part thereof devoted to a non-conforming use shall be enlarged, extended, constructed, reconstructed, or structurally altered if the result would increase the non-conformity. In other words, you make it bigger. And that was ignored. They, they totally refused to ignore that. The town attorney had talked with... Uh, Planning board consultant earlier. Wasn't there a clause about it couldn't be more than 25% or something? Oh, I'll get to that. They're within that. Okay. They're within that. I actually have a different take on a lot of this. So mm -hmm. We can go after it. All right. So they're saying it's a residential use, and so therefore it doesn't, not, nothing has changed. But it's not talking about a resi the fact that this zone is residential still. It's, it's an R10, I think. They're talking about buildings being made bigger. That there was no argument that is not a non-conforming use. Nobody argued that. So now if you go down to Section 7, it says you can enlarge or alter by a maximum of 7, 25 percent. This is the 917, 391.7. But there is more to it. 
Uh, this only applies to structures that were in existence before 1971. All of the buildings in there except for one on parcel access show up as after 1971. So it wouldn't apply to all of the buildings he has there. And we don't know if that building in 1971 that was there is still there. It may well be, but they would have to show that and show how big the building was. The parcel access one gives a number like 350 feet or something like that, and then you get 25% of that. So that was ignored. They, they totally did not do that. The other thing they did is they went out of order. Normally the procedure for these types of things is the ZBA rules on it first and tells them what they found, and then the planning board rules. The planning board ignored that and went ahead and approved the application after that based on the work that Steve Marino said he would be engaged in to improve the buffer. But the buffer would also have a much larger building in there now. So this was unusual. It, as I said earlier, the procedure should have been where they refer them to the ZBA. They did this with other projects on this list, which I'll get to very briefly after. The ZBA first ruled on it, then it goes back to the planning board, depending on what the ZBA allowed, and then the planning board decides how the application should be approved or not. So this was, this was very unusual. Plus, somebody on the planning board made the uh, remark that if we uh, don't let this person do this, uh, th th this could be considered a taking of a person's property by not allowing them to do that. Uh, that came up when the original uh, wetlands law was passed quite a while ago, and it was established that the town had the right to regulate these things in terms of their environment. And people were grandfathered before that, but they couldn't enlarge it, and it's not a taking. So I was a little disappointed to hear that 12, 13 years later, all of a sudden, if you uh, do something in the uh, wetlands or there's some people are going to think it's a taking. What's the definition of a taking? A taking is that the town says you can't use your land a certain way, and you have no, you can't use your land. Uh, this doesn't say that it has provisions for when you can use the land in the wetlands code. They're very, normally very strict. The first one being, why can't you do this elsewhere? So, it, so that's where it basically wound up. So now, the next step in this process is it will go to the ZBA. They're scheduled to go because they said at the last meeting that it would go to the ZBA to decide on the, the uh, clause on 391 section of non-conforming uses. And now it's on their agenda to ev evaluate the same way they did with the um, Taylor project, for example. They were asked to vent, render an opinion on that section of code, how it applies to the project. And that's where it's going to be next, depending on what they say. And the part is how will the uh, present approval of the planning board change of any based on what the ZBA says. So that, that's pretty much most of it. There's a lot more, but that's a, I was asked to keep it relatively brief. Yeah, you're supposed to keep it brief. <laughs> Shannon's going to actually say something. Then. I mean, I, I guess I have a different take on what happened last night at the planning board. And oh. the, um, the issues were still that there are two Non-conforming. There are two issues that they're dealing with. One is that they're too close to the road, the existing building, and the other is that they're too close to the wetland. And the existing building is too close to the road is what gets at the 25 percent um, for non-conforming use. This is not a non-conforming use. This is a building that's too close to the road and too close to the wetland, and thus it is not a change of use. It is not grandfathered in as a non-conforming use. It's always been residential. I'm so confused. When we went to visit the site, there was nothing, no talk about the house that was close to the road. He actually wanted to keep that separate in case he wanted because to sell that's what's it. Going that was not the house. Board. That's yeah, what's going to the zoning board. It's so it's it's the non the the use it, the variance what they're going to the ZBA about is the side setback. Right? So it's like you've it's got a side one, setback. one part of the house here that's too close to the road, 
and one part of the house over here, and both of them have part of them in the wetland buffer it's because not the road, they were built. It's, it's a setback. It's a side setback. The side it's setback. Not a, it's not a road. Okay. It's, it's not a road issue. <laughs> too close to the, the, it's the it's, side. It's too close. There's not enough uh, to their side, parcel side. To the I side. This group. But so what they want to do is connect these two buildings and make it one building. Obviously, you can't connect two buildings just anywhere. You have to connect them where they would connect. Otherwise, you have to build a whole new building. And so that's what they're saying, is that, that the planning board can't say you have to build a whole new building and let that one go. That if they want to keep using their building as residential, that that, that brings it into a different space. They're not saying they're going to build a new building in a new spot that's still in the wetland, and they're not saying they're going to do something new that is non-conforming use that was used to be, that was grandfathered in. They're going to make their two buildings one. They're also going to move this building further back when they do that. So they're going to have they're less the building. building. They are going to have less building space in the wetland buffer. Isn't that the 10 feet? Yeah, something? that's the, yeah. Yes. So they're, they're cutting the building off. They're cutting off 10 feet, feet on one on the one porch side. as closest, but they're not moving anything in the building. But they brought in two experts last night, one the attorney who was here they didn't bring in, who, who interpreted both the non-use and the conforming and said that this is not relevant, that they actually should be able to do more than 25%. And that, um, and they brought in a wetland expert who said, actually the wetlands law, first of all, this is not a wetland, it's a holding body of water, which is true. I, looked at the, I mean, obviously it's true, he's the wetland expert. You bring in a wetland expert, He's the one that is the He's expert. our delineator and he And is the wetland, wetland is wetland further expert. north and this does drain to the wetland. So you can't pollute this body of water. Obviously, you wouldn't want to. There are leach fields currently in it. So it's not a good situation right now. It's also lawn right up to it. The worst thing you can do for a body of water is clear the land right up to it and plant grass. They've been doing that for years. They are going to the reason Steve Marino is for this is that they're going to improve this wetland. They were going to move the leach fields too. If they're I'm moving yeah, they're that moving out it. of there. They're moving it. That's going to be a huge disturbance, but they're going to improve this body of land. And he said the spirit of the wetland law is to protect the function of the wetland. And when it's not functioning, it is okay to do something that improves it. So. And I thought he made a very compelling case. What he said, he didn't say, I'm going to do anything. He's not going to do anything for them. What he said was, I need to see the list of species you're going to use, how much, and where. They said, fine, we have that. They're getting it to him. And the board voted to move forward on this and to grant them the variance, given that he, Steve Marino, approves that list and agrees to follow up for the next three years to make sure they do what they've said. So that was going to be my question. A lot of this yes. is dependent on the three-year follow-up, and yeah. that's got to be so. So please. they have to write that in somehow, and the attorney was right there with them on that. Okay. But that, I think, is the key. So and the planning board was very aware of that. The um, dryer. Dryer? The woman, one of the two women on the Nicole planning board. Nicole, Nicole Jury. Jury yeah. was very on top of that. Yeah. And it was very clear, like, I am saying I, but only because Steve Marino is going to, so it, it really wasn't a spit in the face of the CAC. The expert was pretty clear that this is in line with the spirit of the wetlands law. Well, first of all, Steve Marino is going to be doing the work. It says so basically right here, here somebody else, and they said Steve would do it. Secondly, there's nowhere near a road. Here's the side. Well, she well, means, I, she, I, she's, she's I confused. Misspoke. She misspoke. It's she the meant side the, side, the side. So the they, side. they need two she things. Said. They're going to need a variance for, for distance, a site distance from the other property. It's setback, they call it. They're going to need a setback. The second thing they're going to need is what the zoning code says, Steve Marino aside, they're supposed to interpret zoning code. They're not supposed to make up zoning code. Zoning code says specifically that if you have a non-conforming use, and this was agreed to be a non-conforming use by the, them as well, because these predated the wetlands law, and they're now in the wetlands law, and, they don't, and they're the not conforming to it. So the zoning code says if you have a non-conforming use and you want to make it bigger, you have to go to the ZBA. 
So it's the job of the planning board, not just ours, to look at the code. Uh, is the applicant in compliance with the code? If not, tell the applicant how to be in compliance with the Howard, code. Howard, the attorney was clear that it is not a non-conforming use situation. That it is non-conforming, but it is not a non-conforming use. That's the their word reading of the code, used. but this is why the it's going to the ZBA the now, because it says in the code, it says an eighth grade student could read that, it says buildings. The but attorney the attorney. It was the town's attorney. Their advisory. Said. Now, the same thing ha can happen with any application. Then it goes to the ZBA. If there's a reason for the ZBA to do that, they already directed them to go to the ZBA. We understand to look how at this. this works. I don't think we all need to be taught how this works. We understand you're repeating yourself. I'm sorry. I'm just telling you they were sent to the ZBA to right. look at this section of code. Right. Yes. Yes, but, and they will do that. And the attorney who was sitting here last night will yes. be the same attorney that will yes. be at the so CBA so advising. Yes, Sarah. Yeah, Sarah was the one that had said it. She's the one that's going to be there to to do the next. She's very skilled. Yeah, she's she was right on top of it. Whether or not she's right or wrong, she is the attorney for the town, and she was clear. That's why you have a ZBA. Yes power to the ZBA to look at these things and make a decision of an independent body. They, that's their job to evaluate and make a decision. I think we all understand that. Thank you. And they're going to go to that. That's the next step. Okay. So, anything else on the well, planning board or ZBA to update us on? Yes, and everything else really does not apply to us uh, in terms of the only thing that applied to us previously was the Apollo project, which uh, had to do with diverting a stream and not going into a wetlands buffer. That was all done. Now, that applicant decided not to continue the process at the moment. Uh, all the other ones on this list are basically lot line changes. What about the shore one where they, so I did have a question about this one because so they're going to classify as a type two, no environmental flag, but, and this is just a question of protocol. Like, so that Aaron kept saying, you know, I would have had a question about erosion and stormwater control, but they already started building. So I guess that's passed. Like, and he said it again about like, because, the, because they already started, already, they get a pass. This is a workshop. They have to come back. They were just told a few things they need to be aware of. It's a basically, it's an addition of its cottage. There's a whole section of code that applies to that. But if you start before you get the permission, you get a pass? But do you get a pass? It's a workshop. They were just telling him, this is what you have to bring to the meeting. And he was saying, oh, there's a box here for erosion control, but I assume because you already started, you have up a fence, so I guess that's moot. Oh, there's a box here for stormwater control during the process of building, but I see that you've already started, so I guess that's already passed. No. This is the workshop. He then makes that case at the actual meeting. But nobody did, else hear that? No. So, but is this the one, didn't he have a permit to do this already to build? It on may, this He's already that, built it. Yeah, well, but he already, because he had a permit, but it lapsed. like it lapsed because he, because of COVID or something as well. So he'd been already doing work on it. So I think that's where they were like, well, it doesn't matter because you've already started the So process. he already got the permit and he did Correct. it. Correct. It's not started. like, oh, if you start, then you don't well, have to Well, he had started it, but then he the rules. stopped, I think, yeah. which some people do because of financial or whatever. So I think that's... the permit expire? Yeah, the permit expires as well. So that's why he's now coming back in front of them. So some things... But that presumably already, he had to meet those boxes when he first when got he the first permit. Did. Correct. Okay. That's what I was asking. Right. It sounded very. It was. It was a little insane. like. Well, why would we all just start first? I know. I know. So he had already started the project, stopped, and now is restarting it. But I think he's changed the project. A that's, bit. that's why he has to come back because okay. his permit is no longer valid. It lapsed. Yeah. That's what the workshop was about. Yeah. I, yeah. So that so that it wasn't sense. clear it that that was what now, happened. Right? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Now. All right. Anything else? Uh, the, no, there's a lot line change. Uh, this is also something that we normally don't get involved in, just lot line changes, because it doesn't affect anything until something actually happens on the property. So, and then there was the person 
a link is, I believe, the last one down, construction of a front porch. He went to the ZBA first to get approval because it was, again, he needed a variance from the setback. So that's the procedure. He went there. Now he goes to the planning board. The ZBA said, yes, we think he can have that setback variance. You now, planning board, decide what you want to do with the project. Does he fit into all the code specifications? And this is a workshop as well. And he'll be back with his site plan and everything else. And they normally approve stuff like this once the ZBA grants the setback variance. So it had nothing to do with us. And uh, I think all, which there was also we did the lot line adjustment and we now have construction of the porch. None of these have anything to do with wetlands or us. It's the ZBA, these people went to the ZBA, the two of them, and now sent by the ZBA to the planning board, which is a normal procedure. Okay. And they will be something uh, that will come up again next month. All right. Anything else? Uh, no, um, just uh, the, the ZBA meets on September 20th. At, they didn't have their last one, right? And it I think they, I think October. They, yeah, August, they didn't have an no, August. No, well, that's it. No. Oh, that's us next schedule meeting. That's yeah, that's all of, all of our next meetings. We'll right. have to look and see when the ZBA meets. I think it's the third Tuesday or something. The ZBA on the 20th? On the 18th. It's yeah. the 20th. October, I'm looking at October. Oh, okay. Yeah, 20th of September. It's meeting the 20th. Yeah, yeah 18th of October. Mm -hmm. Leslie, have you got any information for us from the town board? Uh, gosh, no. The only thing that's really happened since the last time we talked. Um, is that um, we are hoping to embark on phase three with NAN, mm -hmm. the board, but the yep. is not voted on that formally yet. We'll yep. discuss that at tomorrow night's meeting. NAN and Tim Mahey gave a great presentation, I think, on the CPRC report on Thursday. It was incredibly cool. thorough. It was really good. Um, and a great discussion, and we had a great turnout of um, residents both here in person and on Zoom. Mm -hmm. It was really good. terrific. Um, and Tiffany Zula has gotten that, that pace sort of next steps for the website. But really, it's about defining um, every part of the town's government, from its committees to what everyone does here in town hall and to different processes and how people can apply um, to either the planning board or ZBA if they have an application, what that process is. Um, and then we've identified, a draft identified sort of a working task force with, that Mary and I have to kind of go through to see who might want to help work on some of those things. Mm -hmm. Susan Meany has been terrific on the planning board. She's done a, sort of a cheat sheet for, you know, if you want to apply for some of these, these are the steps, this is the right. checklist. So it's more kind of work like that um, that we'd be doing kind of across the board. So mm -hmm. it was really helpful. Um, and I think all of the, the report, which we will share, actually I should probably See if we can put that on the website. Let's see. It's very informative. And we'll have some sort of report out for all the committees. Mm -hmm. um, I'll see if I should circulate that for committees as well. All right. Thank you. Is there any decision made on the uh, fire station sign? The sign? No. Uh, when is the when is the village? Uh, the meeting will be, co be coming up next Wednesday, and next that's, Wednesday. that's we're going to have a vote. So. What next Wednesday? Yes. Thank you. Any any other open questions, comments, or suggestions? Well, you're welcome to. Uh, I mean, we will be we will be listening to any public comments. From what I understand, without talking to Tim to verify. Yeah, I think but, he but, said but that he was. We going to we, do we will have some kind of a public a chance for the public to express their opinion before the vote actually happens. Well, so. people have written letters as well. Right. I've been getting some emails. I've been getting people who are approaching me, you know, and just having conversations. So I'm getting a pretty clear idea. It's uh, it's it's right down the middle. I mean, it's it's mm. almost it's almost fifty fifty. Yeah. Wow, I can see that. Are they going to do any promoting for it on Community Day, like the guy with the electronic sign? <laughs> Is the sign no, coming back? No, I don't. I don't think he's doing a campaign. I, I, <laughs> I matter of fact, I think that they probably did a pretty terrible job bringing it in the first place because he mm -hmm. came with a sign that was not the size it, the sign they were going to do right and they did clearly didn't really have a very good handle on how to be able to demonstrate mm -hmm. exactly what they wanted until the very end 
yeah. when they finally showed you what black on white would look right. like. But then people you who know. saw it were pretty positive. I well, that's the people some people. Who I saw some people, that saw, some it some people more, saw it, yeah. Some My people, group, the people yeah. who were all against it to begin with, the people they who crossed saw over. it, crossed over. They crossed over. I, saw, I heard a lot of yeah. crossover people. Yeah, that, that, that's part of the dilemma that I'm dealing yeah. with and the rest of the yeah. board is, too, because yeah. there were people who were emphatic, but they chained themselves yeah. to the Yeah, as soon as they saw sign, it, because the now, black and white and, one isn't bad. And, and now, a lot, now a lot of them come back saying, well, now they saw the black and white sign. And so it, it's, it's very contentious. It's, it's, I'm personally very disappointed that, that this is even become the issue it I has yeah. and why the fire department is insisting on this thing be electric. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's because other fire departments have got because everyone else has that's it. why they want to have the same thing. Everyone wants the same thing. I wrote place. a letter to Tim Palapiste. I also write a letter to the um, the planning board, the ZBA. Uh, no, because they wouldn't have any jurisdiction, so that really no. would be a waste of your time. It's but, like but, village but, trustees. But yeah. On a labor yeah. level, though, doing the sign from your phone or inside the building instead of the, there's a power outage or if there's water or there's whatever, they can do it from their phone instead of going and putting all the letters in there and closing up the window again. Just, yeah, well, I don't yeah, well, well that, that I said, I said when, when, just to recount for me, who was not at the meeting, uh, when when they were trying to do the presentation and the people representatives came in from the sign company, uh, one of the thing, points they made was all of the emergency notices that could go up on the sign. And I, you know, listened and then I raised my hand and I said, to my knowledge, this is going to be far more effective mm -hmm. than someone driving down to Front Street to try to see what's on the, what's going to be on the sign. So if that's going to be the justification for this, then I said that's really not very, a very strong justification. <laughs> yeah. And 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 even Ted Bonus at that point said, Well, you're right, it's gonna be strict not strictly for, but it's gonna be mostly for things about the firehouse that we want to be able yeah, to it's mostly to if I understood and, him correctly, the things that they want to send out and they're gonna stay up there for quite a while, uh, like a tribute to somebody or a special day coming up. Yeah, and yeah, I, think, I think I think like most other five hundred one Cs do in town, whether it's the church, whether it's the school, whether yeah. it's the village, yeah. whatever, it's the same kind of thing. Um, and Tim, and Tim, and I had spoken to Tim, and uh, we hadn't mentioned it publicly at the meeting, but I already had said to Tim, I said, look, this comes down to the one point that Ted made that I think is absolutely valid: is that they're busy enough already without having to run down to manually put up a message on a sign that they wanted to put up with the amount of work they do. I said, I said, I will volunteer. Yeah. I, said, I said the same thing. I, I, I said, said I'll I will volunteer to do I it I said, too. if you want a committee, I said, I will volunteer to be able to, for the next two and a half years while I'm on the board, to make sure anything that they put up or want to put up would be put up in a, in a, within 24 to 48 hours. So it's going to be up there very quickly. Because yeah, I think and, that was one of their big arguments, is that they already do so much volunteer time. And, and they're it actually takes right. them an hour to do that. Mm -hmm. And my response to that was, I'll volunteer to do it for Yeah, them. and Tim already said he did it to his mayoral duties. Mm -hmm. Now, there have been discussions that have gone on since then with Tim and with the with the uh, with Ted and with uh, yeah. Matt on, you know, exactly what kind of a sign will be considered suitable. And I still haven't seen that. So. People have asked me and said, "How are you going to vote?" I said, "I'll let you know when I <laughs> find see what I'm what I'm voting on." When you know what you're voting, but on. I know what I'm voting on. And uh, the only dis real disappointing thing for me is the fact that some people are equating this with some kind of a some kind of referendum in the fire department. Yeah. You a know? referendum on the fire department? Yeah, yeah. and, 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 and saying if you really if you really respect and That's love terrible. the fire department, you'll vote for this. And it's like, wait that's a minute, not fair. time out. No, no that's, that's not fair. Not, you have no right to even go there, okay? They are indispensable. They deserve every kudu you could possibly give them. They deserve our financial support. They deserve more than we could even calculate financially. That has actually nothing to do whether or not the village needs an electric sign or a freestanding sign that you would post letters and things on. I think and, the concern is it just yeah. it's a slippery slope towards suburbanization. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now it's easy once you open up the door. One, you know. Well, to that, the, the zoning code is extremely clear. that mm -hmm. says that electronic signs are not permissible. Mm -hmm. Businesses can't do it. Individuals can't do it. I mean, it's that that that's 
if I know there'd be a tendency, well, that's not so bad. And then someone would say, well, that really isn't so. No, if this coach says no, mm -hmm. then the only reason they're getting a, they, they may be getting a pass on this is because municipalities by law have exemptions from mm -hmm. from going to the town planning board or the village planning board mm -hmm. and getting approval. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the same thing goes true with the with the school. Okay, I, I, to my knowledge, the, t the village planning board never saw a diagram of what the school was going to look like because they had a whole different set of people that had to look at their plans and say yes or no and bless it. And that's that's kind of where you have that distinction. So. It's not going to morph into. But I think that. that other, but the other argument that's come up is that, well, then couldn't other places like town hall and stuff like that be considered outside of that code? Oh, couldn't it could. The, you know, couldn't the the high school or any of the schools around here be considered outside that code? Yes, they, yes, yes, they could. And the point is that would have nothing to do with whether they get a sign or not. But I think it would. But it would give them, and I think that it potentially gives other. So like. You know, the school and argument, well, the, the, the fire department has it. Why can't we have it? We're outside of the work, you know, part of the municipality. The, the, the MEF just gave them, just gave the, just gave the uh, schools sign, new signs, and out of their funds to be able to put up new signs. So at the minute that the school says, oh, we want an electric sign just like that, we'll be like, wait a minute, MEF's going to step in and Well, say, I mean, 10 years down the road, for instance. You know, I don't think this is an issue just for this very moment. And yes, they're saying it would be a black and white sign, but then what happens a next a new generation comes in and you know, 10, 20 years down the line, we've got like scrolling banners and stuff. I well, think that's the concern too. Well, right now, right now you've got, you, you, they're going to have to come up with, as I said before, an, a very detailed agreement of exactly what the restrictions are, what the sign can look like. And once that sign, once that's put into effect, then that'll, if, if you're looking for a precedent, that will be the precedent. And it's going to be, okay, wait a second, we approved this. We didn't approve dancing bears. We didn't approve <laughs> shooting flames and fireworks. That's that's not what was approved. Yeah. So, you know, I'm not saying good or bad. No, no, I know, understand. I'm, I'm just saying I think that's not necessarily going to be a strong argument to say we're going down, we're going down a road we can't turn around from. Yes. You may, because this is what happens with things uh, over time. We may, none of us may be here even at that point, but things that sort of start off small, they get bigger generally, they go off, have a life of their own eventually. And I, I think that's the, the real precedent, that you want to change the look and feel of the village. And even though you think you're going to have control of it, is that a road that we need to go down? Is it that important? that we break precedent with what we've always kept with the village, a rustic, rural-looking village, and start in this direction. I, it's not an issue to me about them putting up something on the sign so much. It, I don't think it's a very big deal for the amount of stuff I've seen on that sign over the years for people to put a bunch of letters on the churches do it, schools do it. So that's not the issue in my mind. The issue for me is what is this? Where are we headed 10 or 20 years from now when none of us are involved and we set off on a different direction? We've managed to keep this village pretty much the way it is over since when I moved here, which was quite a while ago, and that hasn't happened in other towns. I think that's the overarching issue. Yeah. We've, had to, we've had this issue going back and forth for, for like decades mm -hmm. because anybody who's been here, like I have for like 35 years, I mean, you know, when some people moved in just in the 90s and early 2000s, there were some, there was a most definite loggerheads between people who had been there all these years and people coming in saying, why don't we have more street lights? Why don't we have this? You know, and it, it, it's, it's always been, mm -hmm. it's always been that kind of contentious. It's not the thing. fire station is, is most of the people who've been here long term lives and their families, right? So it's. Which is surprising to me. And I, you know, as I said, that's, my disappointment is the fact that at some point I'm really kind of surprised that they haven't said this isn't worth it. Because I think some people are going to become really upset by this. I'm not making a judgment of you saying they're going to be upset by this and they may get some backlash they're not expecting. That would be really, really terrible. Believe me, if we had to go from a volunteer fire department to a hybrid or to a professional fire department, you 
the town and village tax would go through the roof. Mm -hmm. I, I, and I'm not exaggerating. I mean, real. literally quadruple mm -hmm. what you're paying now. I don't think anybody uh, has anything so negatively that I've heard so. about the fire department per se. Yeah, they've been always. I've always respected them all the years I've been here. Never heard anything really bad about them. But they I think it's that a, to justify the sign. That's what because I'm, if you if you disagree where the sign should be or the nature of it, then you're anti fire department, and it's that's not the case at all. No, in my point of view, the the quality, the very nature of the community is one that could easily be lost. Look at Pleasant Valley and what happened. Mm -hmm. And that's a classic one about, uh, you didn't want the library to have a sign, but everyone loves the library. And then the churches and then the others and, and neons and flashing lights and shopping centers. And it goes one to another, to another, to another. And Pleasant Valley is a good example of that. Segmented change, piece at a time. I remember, I'm not to get, get too far back in there, my own life here, but I remember when I first bought my house here, I got a mortgage at the bank at Poughkeepsie, and then I drove to the house, which was here, and I could not tell when I was leaving Pleasant Valley and coming into Millbrook at that time, that there was no visible distinction, distinction to me, an outsider driving here. And I, I don't think anybody will make that mistake again in recent times, and, and that's I think is the issue that the fire department is it's per se is the issue of where this has the potential to go. Maybe one of the reasons it just occurred to me that, that it's so important. The fire department, as Shannon said, you know, it's mainly people whose families have been here for a long time. The village has changed a lot since COVID. The village has been changing and there are a lot of new people living in the village now. So maybe I don't know, maybe people in the fire department whose families have been here for a long time are feeling a little bit like, hey, I want to stake, I want to put my stake in the ground because all these other people are coming. Does that make any sense? Well, I think there's a, there's a bit of, I think there's always been a, uh, a frustration with the fact that many families who came in, I know I, when I, you know, when I came, I came in, I said 35 years ago in 1985, that you know, it's it's extremely middle class, and it was still very, a lot of very affordable houses, et cetera, et cetera. And the village is basically priced out. I yeah. mean, right now, if if you have someone who's in their twenties with a young family and they want to come in and get a you know reasonably decent sized house for that family, good luck trying to trying to get it in the village. It's almost impossible, mm -hmm. and that's that, that's a measure of our success mm -hmm. to it. Unfortunately, it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's mm -hmm. become, we've become far more, far more desirable, which is, uh, has its, has its cause. And yeah, it's frustrating. You know, both my sons are now in Chicago and Colorado, and there was not even a thought about them being able to come back to Mobile and have a professional career here. You know, that was never part of the discussion. And most people had to accept that. So there is some, you know, Resentment about it. They didn't move to Pleasant Valley, Mike. No, they didn't. <laughs> no, they didn't. All right. Anything else? So I, I did have one uh, one note. Um, I am going to attend the webinar on September 14 regarding update on New York State weapon policy changes. Apparently, um, there was a, an update uh, to New York's Freshwater Wetlands Act signed into law earlier this year. Um, which expands the DEC's jurisdiction uh, to smaller wetlands and is important to us is that the new legislation will eliminate the map requirement beginning in 2025. And in 2028, DEC's jurisdiction will expand to wetlands as small as 7.4 acres. Reforms will allow DEC to protect over 1 million acres of critically important freshwater wetlands that are currently unmapped and thousands of acres of additional smaller wetlands. So I am going to find out more about more about that. That's on uh, a week from today. What's the name of the webinar? The webinar is uh, Wetland and Watercourse Protection Lessons from Hudson Valley Town Update and New York State Wetland Policy Changes. It's Wednesday, September 14, from 1 to 2.30. Part of the reason I'm doing it is because these other wetlands were protected at the federal level, but under the most re under the past administration, they stripped that. 
And so New York is now trying to put in place the protections that were federal protections. Mm -hmm. So that's good. So yeah, I it should be more durable if they're at the state level. David, is that one of the ones you sent around? Um, do you know off the top of your head? Just otherwise, I'd be at more notes for me. Yeah, more, more notes. Yes. Yeah. So I can, I can forward uh, that to Rebecca. Yeah, I'll, 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 I think people got it, but I will re-forward it. And also, in the same email, was that there was an echo notice of an ecological rest restoration grant uh, applications due nine thirty. Um, it's uh, for uh, municipalities and Dutchess and other counties to take direct ecological restoration actions in their localities. So I don't know if there are any projects, municipal projects that could benefit from the grant, but it seems that it's, it's would be town property, mm -hmm. but yeah. I, I can do a little more research to yeah. find out if there's anything. Yeah, can you send a link? Yeah. yeah. I mean, do we know of any town property that, like, that's one of the things I was hoping from the natural resources inventory. Like, how do we prioritize town property within the bigger matrix of privately owned property? But but is there any known sites that are of concern that are town property sites? There is a there is a village there's a village site which is an which is considered as an old dump that's kind of down the road and behind Harry's garage and that, that area mm -hmm. over there. And we've already had inquiries from the DEC on the fact that they want to do testing on that site to ch check the site to make sure that there's no problems. And it's not the first time that that's happened. Uh, and they've tested before and come up with no, no, you know, no red flags. So mm -hmm. we're expecting that. And a good example is the East Branch of the Wappinger Creek and the mm -hmm. dams and who's responsible for them. And uh, if someone wants to make them higher or lower, or what about the runoff going into the East Branch and who controls it? And uh, people, people who are neighbors who have property that's lower down don't want the water to raise because of how it impacts the property. So there's always that debate. You know, you think of the, the Wappinger Creek, everyone knows it, just as an example. Uh, our, we had an insurance issue because the taxes were going to go up because we were so close to the Wappinger Creek because of flooding. Well, anyone who knows our house, it's 90 feet <laughs> above the street. We're close, but it's 90 feet down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For that to flood, you know, every, everything. The whole world is The whole good. world. Yeah. 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 But th those are issues that are happening constantly with people who have property and want to build on it near the creek and what's going to happen uh, with the dams and who's in, responsible for them. We did get, we did get in the last four, four years a reclassification of the area below the dam right by, right by uh, the Neen Road that, mm -hmm. that's right there and, uh, and got a much better rating in terms of the fact that there's a far, far, far less possibility of flooding or devastation for people downstream if that dam were to go or there was a sudden gush of water, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and that translated into a better insurance rate for us too. But we did not, we did not, uh, you know, go forward to try to try to get the DC, DC just came to us and said, we're reclassifying the dam and, uh, and the areas underneath because it now is worth a, AA rating as opposed to something else. So that's uh, well. On the end of our road, we're on Deheim, and on the Deheim and Mabbitt's Hill end, about four or five years ago, um, the woman who owns the yellow house that used to be Stuart Anderson's family's house, she was mad because Stuart has, still has access to that, and she was he was letting some people, you know, shoot ducks and she was upset about it so she had somebody come and pull out the beaver dam and then she huge flood of water i think she got in trouble from, from the dec for oh that. she would she yeah was. you can't yeah. you can't disturb yeah. structures like yeah. that there is a very intensive program by the uh by the estuary program uh dec estuary program to try to get rid of as many dams as possible so that 
you know, down the road, we can actually have yeah, good to be a beaver. Fish yeah. have fish being able to, you know, do a full stream run without getting to, get to a road. dam and then, you know, being stopped. So then so, they even give out grants for that. So it took a while for them to get after it. Like the steward yeah. called up about it. It's yeah. a great duck spot. By the way, they shoot the beaver. Can I ask a quick question? Sorry to interrupt you guys. Go ahead. Mike and yeah. Howard, should, I'm just writing this email to Aaron about the parcels with the village notification. Should they contact? Should Aaron contact Chrissy? Aaron will flag it for Chrissy, and then she'll, um, or Kristen rather, and then she'll get in touch with who's the best person. To, to Probably to Howard her. because he's got an electronic version that he has sent to me in the past. Okay. So that, oh, wait know, a second. Wait a second. You know, I mean, I've got, I've got. Well, a, once they, let's say they just. What, what is it that you are asking about? Anything. I may not have it anymore. So what, no, no, what? no, not that. What I'm asking is, is that once. They determine that it is a parcel that requires notification from the village. Who would in the village should they the talk to? The watershed, oh, or you, or what? Are you yeah, doing? they they should they should notify me. It's so my. They notify it's the mine. village. Yeah, yeah notify it's the it's village. Mine. It's a state law. Bill yeah. is one of three municipalities in the entire state that has this law. And it was four, I guess. We're down to <laughs> three now. Yeah. And it, I'm not going to tell you why it was passed. It was passed. <laughs> it was passed. I'll tell you why it was passed. It was passed due to the issue about the town dump and the water supply and so there's a special law that we're part of and it requires notification of the village because you're in the village's watershed and it's probably man's corrections i haven't done man's corrections yet. okay i think that she gave me a whole bunch sorry howard we were doing something on the side <laughs> Should have told you that story. No, probably not. <laughs> all right, anything else? Are we all done? We're looking for grants. Keep, keep, keep mm -hmm. an eye out for Yeah, the, uh, I mean, we're doing a couple trying to get some. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what am uh, I looking for? Look for something to start taking the ash trees down along the road. Yeah. Uh, I, I was just <laughs> through Massachusetts, and they apparently have something because there's a lot of, there's a lot of cutting going on. You know, they're so. dead this year. Like, they were, a yeah. lot of the ash around here and around the schools are. They're starting to get brittle now, and they're yeah. coming yeah. down. Yeah, everything is. Yeah. All right. Noticing that too. Anything else? No. Okay. Our next meeting is October fifth, six p.m. Mm -hmm. I will not be there. Will somebody be able to take the minutes? Uh, yeah. I'll give you a recording. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would actually. I'm sure, somebody will be able to take notes. Yeah. <laughs> well, I can't imagine. imagine. Yeah, it's a worse. It's, it's not that one of us. Yeah, it's not that hard, don't we? Yeah. Or I just take the notes and send me the recording. Yeah. Right? No, yeah. no worries. Yeah. All right. If Thank you. I have you. a motion to close the meeting. Close no, the meeting. Pam, a second. And I second it. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank, Thank you. You remember that law? Oh, okay. Yes. 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 Yes.